Welcome traders to Ticknell Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 12th of April with me, Patrick Munley. US Treasury yields continue to drive markets and if anything, the correlation is becoming stronger. So where to for US Treasury yields in the week ahead? Uh, the answer would appear to be higher. Behind that expectation is a strong US data set, including the March readings for retail sales, stimulus checks starting to come through, industrial production, better weather, and uh, CPI jumping to 2.4% year over year on base effects amongst other factors. Add in fresh long end treasury supply for the 10s and 30s, and I think it's reasonable to expect 10 year yields uh, to be grinding higher again in the coming week. This dynamic, should remain supportive for the dollar against low yielders such as the yen, the Swissy, and to a lesser degree the euro. Commodity FX might be able to outperform a little in the week ahead if Chinese data comes in on the strong side. Uh, in the US we have March trade data and the first look at the first quarter 21 GDP. We'll also be hearing some final thoughts from the Fed, Powell and and the beige book on Wednesday before the two week blackout period before the April 28th FOMC meeting. Also look out for the first quarter results from large US banks, presumably doing quite well with super yield curves and seemingly having avoided the worst of the Archegos scandal. From a technical perspective, the dollar index uh, held below the monthly pivot this, uh, this prior week. I'd be looking for any test into uh, this projected ascending trend line support in this prior uh, area here 9150 watch the bullish reversal patterns there to set long positions targeting a test of the yearly pivot up to 9413 and then we'll have to assess how the market responds at that level um, from a downside perspective really we need to see a loss of 9126 to suggest uh, that we are potentially resuming the downtrend and that would open up another look at 18965 In, uh, in terms of the euro, the primary bullish arguments for the week ahead is, I guess, a case for strong second course US data being already fully priced and traders wanting to jump in early on the euro recovery story. Some signs of which should emerge through the quarter as, for example, vaccination programs gain pace in the likes of France and Germany. But with the EU recovery funds stuck in the German courtroom, the euro re-racing story may have to wait. In terms of the local calendar, we'll hear a couple of times from ECB President Lagarde, as well as seeing Eurozone February retail sales and industrial production, plus the German April ZEW investor survey. Elsewhere, the global chip shortage won't be helping the European auto industry. From a technical perspective, um, as the euro continues to find support above the 118.50 monthly pivot, I think we can look for a test of the pivotal 120 area. Um, if we lose the monthly pivot or support at 118 early in the week, then I would anticipate that we, uh, we likely roll over and take another look at the prior lows at 117 en route potentially to test 116. Sterling felt the perfect storm of the vaccination concerns and the heavy one-way positioning. Prior to the sell-off, Sterling was the biggest speculative long in the G10FX space versus the dollar as measured by CFTC flow data. However, on vaccinations, the UK regulator pointed out that the balance of benefits and risks still favours the AstraZeneca vaccine and the UK government reiterated that its plan to offer the first dose to all adults by the end of July remains intact. On the data front for the week ahead, we have February industrial production on Tuesday and monthly February GDP also on Tuesday. None should have a meaningful impact on sterling as they don't capture the anticipated sharp second quarter recovery of the domestic economy, while the recent sterling drivers were purely related to the vaccination expectations. So from a technical perspective, uh, sterling back testing the 136.50 uh, support area if we, if we break there, I'm looking for a test of the equality objective back down to 135.47. We also have monthly range support, 135.70. I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns in this area, set long positions targeting a retest of 140 from below. In terms of the yen, the highlight really of the week will be Prime Minister Suga's uh, visit to Washington, the first leader hosted by President Biden. Presumably the pandemic will be top of the discussion topics, though 
China will be keenly listening for any remarks on Taiwan. The visit comes at a time when Dolly Yen is far from any sensitive levels, although Japanese exporters will clearly be a lot happier than their counterparts in the US. And it would seem a little incongruous for President Biden to try and talk uh, the dollar yen lower. The market is not paying much or really any attention to Japanese data at the moment. It's instead what US data means for US yields that are the dominant driving factor. So from a technical perspective, I'm looking for the dollar yen to uh, test support down to 108.50. Watch for bullish reversal patterns in this area to target a move up to test monthly range resistance at 113.60. We also have a bigger quality objective up in that area as well. At this stage, really only a loss of the ascending trend line support of 107.40 would suggest we have a meaningful high in place and we could trade back down uh, lower again. The Aussie dollar, along with most high, yield, high yielders, has not been able to take great advantage of the soft uh, dollar momentum over the past week as low yielders led the rebound. This dynamic may change this week as US Treasury yields may be back on the rise. But some positive growth and trade data out of China, along with stabilizing risk sentiment, may support the block of commodity currencies. Aussie's higher exposure to Chinese sentiment also through the iron ore channel should be particularly helpful. Domestically, Australian job numbers for March will be closely watched to gauge the pace of the recovery in the country. We could see another set of good data, and while this may marginally provide some extra short-term support for the Aussie, it would likely fall short of impacting the Reserve Bank of Australia's rate expectations, which should remain stuck to the bottom for a while, uh, regardless of encouraging data. Central Bank has recently discussed the issue of rising house prices in Australia, but that should also be ineffective in moving rate expectations as macro prudential measures will most surely come before any change in the monetary policy stance. So from a technical perspective, the Australian dollar still below the monthly pivot. I'd be looking for a move through Friday's low at uh, 75.85 to establish short positions targeting the equality objective down to 74.53. I'll be paying very close attention to how we trade here down to the 74 level. Uh, watch for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions targeting a test of monthly range resistance up to 78.20. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for a week commencing the 12th of April. Be sure to join me as always on Thursday for additional live market and trade analysis. As always, I wish you all a very good week. Thanks very much.